creepers how the heck are you crazy creeps today we are here in portland at the vaughn ebert brewing company but in 1980 was the ringside steakhouse that's right and a hostage situation broke out here september 8th of 1980 three guys broke in trying to get some money to further their kind of crime crime spree if you will today we're going to talk about the hostage situation that happened right here at the ringside in 1980 stay tuned it's definitely a good one like i said this is the von ebert brewing company now but this was the ringside steakhouse here in portland right here at the glendevere golf course which is right here behind it and on september 8th of 1980 at about 12 o'clock three men whose names i'm going to leave anonymous just for you know security reasons for myself with ambitions of kind of furthering their crime spree would rob this this particular steakhouse and during the robbery slash hold up it would go terribly wrong and in fact the police and the FBI would get involved so when the three guys came in to rob this now brewery which was in the steakhouse they didn't realize how fast things would get out of control and one of the guys went in to you know basically robbed the joint and when they did one of the workers actually tripped a silent alarm so instead of just basically getting the money and taking off when they came out there was already about 10 cops sitting right about here blocking the driveway with about three or four more FBI agents on the way they saw all the police standing out here and hightailed it back in to the bar restaurant and began to you know tell folks listen you guys aren't going anywhere no one's leaving and we just wanted to basically get this money and go and you guys are permitting not permitting that so no one's leaving and so literally 10 15 hours went by and the police would began to you know talk with the suspects which would trigger a huge newscast of folks all the channels would come down and channel 8 was on deck and some of the guys that were inside saw that the newscasters were here and informed the you know robbers hostage takers that the news was here so they actually called KGW from inside and told them you know look we're gonna we're gonna make these demands and you guys are gonna help us meet them and the police were actually really upset with this so they demanded KGW to cut ties with the hostages over the phone and told them look do not you know do not talk to these guys anymore and the police began to you know talk with these guys and the demands were just in incredibly ridiculous at first they demanded a getaway plane with I think it was like you know five million dollars just something ridiculous um, and the police said absolutely not and so they kind of lowered their demands to five thousand dollars and also wanted some handcuffs and the police were like just so wore out about 15 hours into it met their demands with the handcuffs and told them look you know enough's enough and uh kind of just waited it out and with no prevail the police decided look we're gonna give these guys the handcuffs which i just couldn't find i don't just don't understand why they did that part but anyways they gave these guys some of their demands by supplying you know the handcuffs and then they went on to tell them look enough's enough you guys aren't getting anything else and uh, you better come out now because if you don't the the consequences and the penalties are going to be so much more 
And so about 17, 18 hours in, uh, one of the guys decided, look, enough's enough, and he gave up. Um, and I think kind of what helped him give up was the police actually had PGE come out, which is our, you know, power company here, to, you know, one of these big power poles here on one of the sides was the power box. And they went ahead and cut the line to the power. So there was basically no power at this point, and it made it to where, you know, there's no power, there's nothing going on other than there was some booze. That's right, there was booze at the bar. So these, you know, these criminals, these kids, where, uh, and if I didn't mention, they were in their 20s. Um, they they uh, started getting into the bar and giving these hostages drinks at this point to kind of, you know, maybe ease the situation or just make it to where, you know, maybe it wasn't such a big deal. They wanted to just get the money and go. And so they, they supplied the hostages with drinks. And after about like 17 hours in, one of the guys, like I said, came out with his hands up, which you can actually see in the newspaper article that I'll insert. And it was just exhausted. So slowly letting some of the hostages go with the two gentlemen still inside out of the three, as the hostages were released and came out, the police realized these guys are intoxicated. They've been drinking and were, you know, probably scared and upset. So the hostages even being led into the bathroom as needed and kind of met with their demands from the hostage taker. So maybe trying to ease the tension or maybe making the penalties lessen by, you know, later explaining to the police that, hey, these guys were serving us alcohol while we're here. So just a really odd story. And so, like I said, you know, just a long, grueling hostage situation. And eventually all the hostages were released and the gentleman decided to kind of give up the police telling them, look, you guys aren't getting any of your demands met. So they were released. And a couple of the, uh, well, the two that didn't come out first off actually got a lesser sentence than the one kid that basically came out first and told him, look, I tried to, you know, ease the situation by coming out, trying to tell the other two it's time to give up. He actually got a stronger sentence and went on to do some other crazier things while behind bars. And I also want to thank uh, Steve, the amateur historian, did his version of this a while back and goes into, you know, a little bit greater detail. And uh, I have to thank him kind of for this story too. But just a crazy, crazy story if you think about it. We got drunk hostages. We got kids trying to rob the ringside to buy cocaine and further their criminal you know criminal minds and activities and everything went wrong and luckily no one got hurt the police and the FBI were involved and like I said after a huge long standoff the other two finally came out with their hands up crazy to think that all took place back here another interesting part of the story was not only did the cops set up a and the fbi set up like a little retaining station if you will in one of the houses directly across the street but one of the hostages a woman in her 40s from gresham kind of tricked the hostage takers into letting her go she said she had heart problems and i think her and her husband were actually let go she kind of pretended like she had some heart issues so pretty clever thinking and you know in such a crazy time there it is get in there oh man I've got the driving range here gotta be careful this just came out of the tree 
I didn't think they could go up over the net, but apparently they do. I, that was a little before my time here. Oh, okay. But, uh, I do remember a, a hostage situation over in a house right across the street. There was. There was one years later as well. Another, ho and it happened in one of the one of the homes over here. That's right. Um, and they had to clear the course. That's I remember. That's I was right. Working there. That was another hostage thing, but just right across the street. Interesting. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. I thought I'd say hello and and thank you. Yeah. That's gonna do it from the old ringside grill, which is now the brewery. Crazy story. I'm glad no one was actually hurt. And uh, like I said, that's gonna do it though for today. If you guys are new here, make sure you hit that red subscribe button. You can ring that bell. That way when I creep, you guys will be the first to creep. Until next time, creeper out for now. Peace.